Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is angled launched projectile problems. And that's exactly what we wish to figure out in this video. How do you solve an angled launched projectile problem? I'm Mr. H, and let's get started. Angled launch projectiles are projectiles launched at an angle to the horizontal. Initially, there's both x and y components of velocity. There's three things that you should know about such projectiles in order to ma analyze mathematical problems involving them. The first one is that a ax value is zero and the ay value is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. This is true of all projectiles and certainly is true of this projectile. Second thing that you should understand is that at the very highest point in the trajectory, the vertical velocity is zero meters per second. You you can notice at that point no vertical arrow at that location vy equals zero and finally if you were to take a projectile at two locations in its trajectory that were of the same height what you would notice is that the vy value is equal and opposite to the vy value at the other point you can see that here in the diagram for one second and five seconds and you can also see it for zero seconds and six seconds so the vx is the same for both of these positions of the same height and the vy is also the same in a previous video, we discussed the mathematics of projectile motion. And in that discussion, we said that the horizontal motion of a projectile is independent of the vertical motion. And the result is that when we derive equations for analyzing projectiles, we derive two sets of equations, one for the horizontal motion and one for the vertical motion. You'll notice in these sets that the first set, horizontal, has just one equation that we'll ever use. But the second set has four sets of equations. And the little subscripts x and y after the variable symbol indicate that that particular vector quantity is the horizontal component or the vertical component if it lists y. Besides needing to know the formulas, we also need to know a strategy. And when it comes to projectile problems, the classic strategy that we use begins with you read the problem carefully and you diagram it to get a mental picture of what's going on. The second step is that you go about identifying known values, expressing them in terms of a variable, like VO equal 32 meters per second. The third step is you identify the unknown variable. You'd say something like DX equal question mark. The fourth step is you pick your formula and then step five is you're going to substitute into that formula, perform some algebra, and solve for the unknown. Most projectile problems state the VO value, the original velocity, and the angle, we call that theta. But if you remember the formulas I just showed you, there was no VO or theta in the, in the equations. What you have to do as a first step is to take the VO and theta and find the horizontal and vertical components, what we call the VO in the x direction and the VO in the y direction. You do that using trigonometric functions. Here's the formulas that would, you, you would use. VOx is equal to the original velocity, VO, times the cosine of the, the angle, theta, and VOy equal the original velocity times the sine of the angle. In giving you these two equations, we're assuming that the angle, theta, is measured with the horizontal as shown in the diagram. Now, you have, now you, at this point, you have three different velocities, a VO, a VOx, and a VOy. So you always need to be careful as to which velocity you put into your equations. Look for the little subscript. They usually say things like VOx or VOy. And typically, you don't need to use VO once you've used these trick functions to find the components of VO. So here's our first projectile problem. My first step of doing is I'm going to read it carefully and identify what I know. So it says a projectile is launched at 32.1 meters per second in an angle theta of 52.6 degrees above the horizontal. That's the VO and that's the theta. And what I wish to find is the time in the air, the horizontal displacement, and the peak height. So here I go. My first approach to this is I'm going to take the VO and theta, and I'm going to resolve it into its VOx and VOy components. So here's the equation for doing that. When I go 32.1 times the cosine of 52.6, I get the VOx. It's written there. And I do the same thing with the sine function to get the VOy. And you see my work is shown. Now I'm going to go about calculating the total time in the air. To do that, I'm going to use the idea that at the highest point, at that location, and you look at the diagram above me, at that location, the Vy value is zero. So I'm going to use this equation right here. Vfy equal V original Y plus Ay times T, and the Ay is negative 9.8. So I know when the time is time up, the Vy is zero. So I'm going to substitute that in to my formula. And there you see it rewritten. Now I have a couple of steps of algebra to do to find the time up value. The first step is I'm going to add 9.8t 
to both sides. So the formula becomes 9.8 T up equal 25.5 meters per second. And then the second step is I'm going to divide both sides by, by 9.8. So T up is equal to 25.5 divided by 9.8. That comes out to be 2.602 seconds. Now that's the time to get to that highest point. Now if the projectile rises up and then rises back down, the time up equals the time to come down. So to find the total time, take the 2.602 and double it and you end up getting 5.204 seconds as the time in the year. So I have one of my three unknowns determined, t total, but I also have to get dx and dy at the peak. Let's start with dx. If you notice the, the diagram I've drawn uh, above me, we're talking about the horizontal displacement when the total time, when the time is the total time, that is when the time is 5.204 seconds. And here's my formulas, and I want a horizontal formula because I'm finding dx. There's only one to choose from, so it makes the choice easy. I write it down, dx equal vox times t. Then I look for the value of vox. I've calculated that already. It was 19.496. You see it. You see it listed here. Uh, now I'm going to take that and multiply by the total time. That's the 5.204 seconds. Do it on your calculator, and when you're done, you get the answer, and it comes out to be 101.46555. Blah 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 blah. And you don't need all 16 digits. There's rules for how many digits you include in your answer, and I would refer to your teacher's rules for that. But typically they are. If you're given three significant digits in the givens, that's how many you're going to put on your answer. So 101 meters suffices for me. Now I have to find the dy at the peak. Now what we're talking about there is, if you refer to the diagram again, is we're talking about the vertical distance when the time is the halfway time, when it's the 2.602 seconds. So here's your equations for calculating, project, for solving projectile problems. And there's three of these vertical equations that have dy in them. Now you can use any one of them, but the one I favor is the one here on the bottom right. So I'm going to write that formula down. Here's why I love that one. Because I happen to know that when the time is time up, that the vy value is zero meters per second. So I'm going to take those two numbers, the 2.602 and the zero meters per second, and I'm going to plug it into this equation here along with the 19.49, or along with the 25.500 for the voy. And the equation turns to this, dy at the peak is the inside of parentheses, 25.500 plus zero. Now that means the plus zero part cancels, and that's why I like this equation. So I'm, I'm really going 25.500 divided by two and then multiplying by the T up value of 2.602. Do that on your calculator and when you're done you get 32.2 meters as the height at the peak. Here's a quick summary of how we solve this three-part problem. The first step is we take the VO and the theta that are given and we find the VOX and VOY velocity components using the cosine and the sine function. In the second step, we determine the time it takes the projectile to get up to the highest point. I use the idea that at that highest point, the VY value is zero, and I use this equation right here to solve for the time to go up to that point. In the third step, I found the total time for the full trajectory by doubling the time to go up to the peak. In the Fourth step, I calculated the dx value using the only dx equation we ever use. I'm going to put the total time in for the time value in that equation. In the fifth and final step, I found the height at the peak by using this equation. There were three I could have used, but this is the one I prefer. And I used the idea that when the time equal the time up, the final y velocity is equal to zero meters per second. There you have it. Here's our second example, and we're going to do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to have you pause the video, read and solve the problem, and when you're done, press play, and you'll see the answers. And then if you need a video-guided solution, look in the description section below, and you'll see a link to this example to video solution. So pause the video now. When ready, press play. You'll view the answers. A reminder, there you have the answers, and if you need the video solution, look in the description section for the link. I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out? If you like the video, could you give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a question or comment in the comment section down below. Here's your action plan. Three items from our website. You'll find links to each one of these in the description section below. The calculator pad, the first item, includes questions and answers and audio guided solutions. The second one is a, called the concept builder. Great way to freshen up on some of the concepts involved in this lesson. And the third idea here is a tutorial section on our website. You can read at your own pace and kind of freshen up on the ideas we've discussed. I'm Mr. H. Thanks for watching.